Hey, it's Zaina Lali. This year has been a lot of reflecting and it's definitely not been easy because of the current economic state and just the state of the world right now where it feels really tough for everyone. I wanted to share some of this life advice I've learned over the years on my own and I wish I could go back in time and tell my younger self these exact principles because I think it would have landed me in a different spot than today. For this video, I want to tell them to you so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. Starting off with number one, which is that everything you want in life is outside of your comfort zone. But the caveat to that is the greater your desire is, the more pain you'll have to tolerate. And that's because the greater the desire is, the more that other people will want it. So for example, if you want to have a really high income, you're gonna have to tolerate a lot of pain to get that because a lot of people will be competing with you to get that. And the pain threshold and tolerance that you have is what's gonna set you apart from other people. And it's not just physical pain I'm talking about. For example, athletes who perform at a high level, it's really a lot of mental pain where you're constantly going through something and it feels hard. There doesn't feel like any feedback in success. It's not like a video game where you constantly get rewarded for achievements. You're just trudging through and maybe Maybe one day you're hoping that you're gonna see the outcome of all your hard work. The higher pain tolerance and threshold that you have, the harder you can work and then as a result, the more that you can get. If it was that easy as girls say, make $10,000 a month doing two hours of work a day, if it was that easy, then why are they grinding on YouTube trying to sell you this dream instead of just keeping that to themselves? The second principle is that life is really coming from you rather than at you. Because my theory is that everyone is born into this world with a set of conditions and it's up to us to make the most and get the best outcomes with the conditions that we have. On a day-to-day -day level, that means you need to have the right habits because your habits are essentially a system of actions that you execute every day and that's what I mean because the opportunities that you can acquire really come from that system that you execute. Even someone who is highly privileged from an exceptionally wealthy background like someone like Elon Musk, they still have to work extremely hard to achieve the maximum results that can be netted from their conditions. The next principle is that you have to first demonstrate what you are before the world gives you what you want. And the clearest example of this is when you get a promotion at work. Usually you're already performing at a higher level and taking on those responsibilities before someone officially gives you that role. This is something I've personally experienced as well where I wanted to work in social media and I didn't have any background in social media. So during the pandemic, I started out doing social media, starting on YouTube first, then on TikTok. And by now I've done over 600 videos. And that's part of the reason why I was hired previously at Nextdoor because Nextdoor was a social media platform and I had a social media context as a creator. So that's what I mean about showing up for yourself is that if you want an opportunity, you have to put yourself in the situations where you can do the actions and then then demonstrate that you can take on the responsibility if it comes to you and then hopefully one day the world will recognize that. The next principle is a bit of a switch up but it's about networking and specifically networking is most important when you're in school. School is the last egalitarian place to make friends. What I mean by that is in school students are pretty much on the equal level playing field. We all have the same resources to get the same objectives. You're spending 8 to 10 hours a day in activities and hobbies and similar interests to other peers. And if you score 100 on a test, it has no effect if someone else scores 100 on the test. At school, it's just essentially you the students as one versus the teacher. However, this is completely different in the working world. Now you have things like levels, titles, brands on your resume, and people are not on the equal playing field anymore. And everyone essentially has a conflict of interest because inherently everyone is competing for their few resources or spots that are limited in the company, whether that is for promotions or for job security when there's a layoff. When people befriend you, it's not just solely based on your personality and character like it was in school, but what you can provide to them and what value you can bring. And this is not surprising because people are trying to survive in these expensive cities, so they're spending all their energy and time trying to level up their careers to get financial security and anyone they befriend has to help them achieve the outcome in some way. You're spending 8 to 10 hours with people that you have a conflict of interest and this is the complete opposite of what it's like in school. So inherently, it's a lot more difficult to make friends. The next principle is that knowledge is the most important asset. I wish someone told this to me as a younger self, especially because young women back then and today are constantly being marketed about how important it is their appearances are. But in fact, the most important asset for any human being is knowledge. 
because knowledge translates into your awareness, and your awareness comes into play in how you make decisions, how you protect yourself, and how you are able to strategize to better further your self-interests. A lot of what you see sold in the media and sensational news is how these younger women that put a lot of time and effort in how they look are able to secure and marry much richer, older men. And it's not all fairy tales like they sell you. Studies have shown that when younger women marry men who are much older than them, their lifespan decreases. So obviously there's a lot of factors like stress, financial control, lack of autonomy that goes into it that would explain why this is happening. Knowledge is not only how you can protect yourself, but also how to strategize to get the best outcomes of the conditions you have. The last principle is that society pays handsomely for problems it cannot yet solve itself. When you generate value for society, it gives you money, and the money is kind of like an IOU. And you can use this money to spend and get nicer rewards, like nicer cars or nicer houses. And in order to get more money or more rewards, you have to solve harder and more complicated or complex problems. And here's the thing, complex and complicated are not the same thing. Complicated may be when you have a car and you have a major issue with the engine and you're going to take it to the mechanic. That's a complicated issue, but there are prescriptive ways to solve it. Complex is like innovative problems that are ambiguous and when there's no prescriptive path, that is when society rewards the most. Hence why innovation pays, because you're charting the path that other people can eventually one day follow. As another example, doctors and surgeons solve complicated problems in human anatomy. However, the path that they have has been chartered and has been prescribed in terms of there's exact paths in schools and education they can get. Versus a software engineer working at an AI company, they're solving problems for AI that have not been solved before. There's no chartered path. And that's why when they're solving these ambiguous problems, they can be rewarded and paid exponentially more than doctors and surgeons with PhDs. So if you wanna make a lot of money and you have the pain tolerance, then you should join these new fields or industries that have to do with innovation with many ambiguous and complex problems for you to solve. Anyways, that was the advice I would share with my younger self if I could go back in time to my life and my career. So I hope you're able to watch this video and learn from some of my mistakes so that you can get further ahead in your journey to wherever you wanna go. If you wanna hang out with me again, then hit that subscribe button and notification bell, and I will see you next week. Take care. Bye.